Creative force feedback settings is a form of art in my opinion. Uh, there's uh, as many uh, FAB settings as uh, there are racers on track globally in sim racing. On this video we're gonna check out on uh, the process of uh, creating FFB settings Olli Pahkalasta. The process of uh, creating force feedback for me is, is quite uh, straightforward. So the, basically whenever I enter into a new simulator or uh, uh, or have a new car which might need some uh, uh, adjusting for the force feedback settings. I take on the default profile of, of uh, the manufacturer in this case uh, Simicube 2 has uh, and Granite has made great presets on, on based on a different simulator. And the first thing what I do is I want to remove all the filters like just like everything. Uh, and this is because you know the it, every time you want to process a signal coming from the game to the wheelbase and then to the wheelbase to command the motor, it, every time you, you uh, add some uh, filters, it means that the sing signal needs to be processed and, and it adds latency and, and that's something what I uh, don't want to have. So uh, I remove everything and uh, take for example a formula car uh, it's pretty straightforward, that's a good car to do a baseline and go out on track and test on how does the car feel, how does the force feedback feel and usually without any filters it's uh, the, the FFB feels quite industrial so then I start adding a little bit on, on filters depending on, on the situation so uh, first thing what I usually do is add the reconstruction filter to one or two or maybe even three depending on on how spiky the, the force feedback is. So the recon filter basically smoothens out the the spiky the, the biggest spikes in the force feedback so that's something what distracts me a lot during racing. And then after I've done the recon a few clicks forward um, I usually go and check the peak and notch filter. I try to find uh, you know, hassle around with the, with the refresh rate and the hertz and, and the decibel to see if I can remove uh, the possible noise if there's any. And, and you know, that makes me uh, able to feel a little bit more on the car and without adding too much latency. Um, and in addition to that, you know, when, once you get, uh, get it going with those two settings, then I uh, start checking out the filters if I need to, you know, and, and all the filters like damping and friction and I check uh, on uh, if I on a driving basis. So what it means is that, uh, you know, if I lock up on an entry phase of the corner while trail braking and I constantly having have issues on, on, on consistency on that matter on, on a car on a track, uh, then I add damping to, you know, make it a little bit slower to, to move the wheel against the force feedback so, so you know you don't turn over when you're uh, trail braking and turning a little bit or vice versa if you use friction I, I use uh, mainly on, on if I struggle on the exits so if the, if the steering wheel starts going back and forth for example on, on the exit phase of the corner whereas you would need to be pretty straightforward uh, when you go full throttle then I usually add uh, a little bit of friction to remove the back and forth uh, uh, to smooth out the driving uh, what not. And uh, then you obviously have uh, inertia so if you have a really lightweight uh, steering wheel uh, you might want to add a little bit on, on the inertia it eases off and makes the makes the makes the wheel feel a little bit heavier and obviously slew rate is, is something what is pretty popular among on people. I usually don't limit the slew rate, I just wanna get the get the noise out elsewhere. But you know what it means is that you wanna use the slew rate uh, if your if the acceleration of the force feedback is quick or if it like you know mm, it when you're coming out of the corner and, and you get a always snap oversteer it just 
accelerates the FFB and the motor accelerates really quickly and, and you might want to, you, you might break your hands and then you want to maybe adjust the slew rate or just, that's a feel matter as well, uh, but I usually don't use them. And then there you have the, uh, the latency slider and, and you know, if you, you add uh, latency, so if you add filters, you might have some latency so you can you can use that uh, filter to reduce the latency. It handles the signals a little bit differently, so you won't get any oscillations or, or whatnot. And obviously in the lower part, you know, you have the direct input effects. And uh, you can use those, uh, for example, let's say you have the game's own damping, like in, for example, in eye racing. So if you add damping, from there, that's a direct input effect, and and you want to add some damping from there. So so that's basically if you add filters from the game, you go direct input, and and if you wanna the the cube uh, process the signals coming in, then you go stay on top, so to speak. But uh, that's the way I do it. Um, so to sum up, it's basically no filters and then little by little I add if I need something and uh, keep it as low as possible because you know there's you want to feel as much as possible and, and if I do need something driving wise to help my consistency then I add something. Hope this made sense I hope you hopefully uh, you guys like this video and uh, remember to subscribe and, and follow us on, on overpower social media channels and uh, yeah, let me know if you uh, like this comment section, you know all this basic YouTube, YouTube and video stuff and uh, hopefully see you guys soon. Ciao, ciao.